Today I'm going to show you how I make rocket fuel. This is a demonstration on how I make it. You are responsible for your own safety. Keep in mind, in some locations, it is not legal to purchase the materials or to assemble them. So you'll need to check with the local authorities to make sure that you can even do this. Also, this should take place outside, especially if this is the first time you're making the fuel. Now, if you burn down the garage, your dog dies, your girlfriend leaves you, it is not my responsibility. It is up to you to be safe and do this carefully. Let's take a look at a couple of the tools that I use to complete the task. An infrared thermometer is essential to monitor the temperature of the materials. I use an electronic digital scale so I can weigh things out accurately. The coring rods are made out of aluminum and they're 3 eighths of an inch thick. I have a 2 inch piece of 1 inch PVC pipe with a liner already in it. The liner is made out of a file folder or poster board or some other thick construction paper like that. I have a 3 8 inch fender washer that the pipe fits over the top of it. Then I take another washer, put it on the top, and this guides the coring tool down into the fuel to keep everything nice and straight. I also use a piece of dowel to help tamp the fuel down in there and to control it if it gets on the outside. I use a variety of mixing sticks and before I start I spray all the aluminum and the steel pieces with cooking spray and that keeps the fuel from sticking to the coring rods and to the uh, washers that I have here. Today I'm mixing a 200 gram batch of fuel. I have 164 grams of potassium nitrate and sucrose or powdered sugar in the blue cup. I have 36 grams of carol syrup or corn syrup in the clear cup here. Additional to that, I am mixing in another 30 grams of leftover fuel from a previous project. Check the description for a link to alternatives to carol syrup or corn syrup if you don't have any in your local area. I mix my potassium nitrate and sugar in a ball mill. If you don't have one available, you can just swirl it around in the cup and mix it up and that'll work just as well. Turn the electric burner on low and put the carol syrup in. Just as it starts to boil, pour one third of the fuel in and the rest of the fuel that I didn't use previously. Turn the burner down just a little bit so it doesn't boil too hard and start mixing. I'm at 162 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm at 205 degrees Fahrenheit and you can see the mixture starting to boil a little bit. That's okay. If the mixture starts to boil very hard, you can turn the electric burner down just a little bit. I'm at 260 degrees Fahrenheit. I usually take the mixture up to 265 degrees and hold it there for a short amount of time. Now that the mixture is cooked for a few minutes, it's about ready to cast. Turn off the burner and set it aside and we'll get ready to cast the fuel. Now place the coring rods into the top. Be careful the fuel can still be hot. Now that five minutes or so have passed, I start pushing the coring rods out. Now I'm ready to remove the washers.
The fuel is still pliable at this point. If any of the holes have been disturbed, you can still take a small stick and clean them up. Now that the fuel has cooled a little bit, we can go ahead and take it out. I like to take a little piece of cellophane tape, tape it across there so it doesn't come unraveled. As you can see, that looks pretty good. And on this end, you can trim that with a pair of scissors if you like. I would probably trim that one up a little bit. The fuel is starting to harden. Now it gets fairly hard, but not rock hard. It still has some flexibility. So I'll continue to push the rest of them out. I hope you enjoyed the demonstration. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can follow my video series as I install a motor in the rocket and fly it. Also, make sure that you do this safely. Think about every step before you do it. Monitor those temperatures and be careful whatever you do.